Well, my friends, today is an exciting day because we are combining two of my favorite things. Smoke short ribs, meat pork buns, and have a baby. Now let's go! Here I have some nice marbled short ribs. They are from the land of Costco, region of meat department. If you can find some short ribs on the bone, even better, although they will take a little longer. I love these and I can take one look at them and see the fat and know that they're gonna be perfect for smoking, braising, any kind of slow cooking method. When you're trying to slow cook something, avoid lean meat at all costs. There's no getting that stuff tender. It's just not gonna work. I always say, when you go shopping for meat, don't choose the meat, let the meat choose you. Now, I've thought quite a bit about this spice mix that we're gonna put on here. And I'm starting with white pepper. We're gonna try to get a little bit Eastern with this, Chinese, I suppose. And I'm grinding this fresh because I'm awesome. But if you wanna buy it ground, that's fine too. And we're gonna put salt in here, but not too much because of the sauce we'll be making later and mixing with these short ribs. We don't want this to be too salty. So we gotta think about the end product, not what we're doing in the moment. Now, some salt here, but again, I'm just doing a teaspoon and a half, not too much. Just a little sugar as we are smoking these kind of barbecue style. Chinese barbecue. And the secret ingredient, which I just love in these buns, is Chinese five spice. And it goes, and we just give that a little mix. I don't know why I'm using a chopstick, but I am. Oh God, that smells so good. I'm gonna be making Taiwanese popcorn chicken soon, and this is, actually, this is exactly the same rub that you put on it. Sort of after you fry it, you put this on, incredible. Now let's season up our short ribs. Take your time, do it from a distance. Try to distribute that season nice and evenly. Now, I'm gonna first cook these at 200 degrees, because my smoker has a super smoke setting, and I really wanna get that smoke flavor into them. And then we'll wrap them and turn up the heat a little later, finish cooking them. Let's go. Now our ribs have been smoking for two hours. We need to wrap them as per barbecue protocol. Butcher's paper will work best here, but this is all I have. So I'm gonna treat it like a burrito and wrap it just like this. Now I've increased the heat to 275 and we're gonna drop these all back in. For another few hours, I'll let you know exactly how long it takes when they're done. All right, another two hours at 275 and these things have just hit 200 internal, which is what we want. Now it's just time for a little meat nap. So I'll just drop them all in here because when you slow cook meat, braise meat, smoke meat, crock pot, whatever, slow cooking tough cuts of meat like we did here. A big mistake I see people doing is they'll just start shredding up the meat right away or take it out of the liquid it was cooking in. But when you allow it that time to actually rest, it gets so much more tender. Next time you braise some meat or slow cook some meat, try it right away and then try it after it's done a good long rest. You will be amazed at the difference. Okay, now. That's been in there for an hour. We get to unwrap all our little presents. Ooh, just absolutely glistening. Now, instead of just shredding these all up, I wanna go for that pork style. So we're gonna slice them into cubes. I think we're gonna just have to try a little piece of this. Mmm. oh, this is the exact right texture for what we're doing. We don't want this to be like pulled pork. We want it to be like a pork bun. And when you cook the pork for a pork bun, it has quite a similar texture to this, right? We wanna be able to feel it when we bite into that bun. The flavor on this is incredible because we cooked it at such low temperatures, the five spice flavor is really preserved. And there's our beautiful little meat cubes. Now to finish our short rib filling, water, soy sauce. I personally love this stuff out of Taiwan. Wan Jia Shan is the brand, it's insanely good. Brown sugar, white pepper, star anise, five spice, green onion, some shallots, and some slivers of ginger, and a little sesame oil. Now we're gonna simmer this and then thicken it up. I'll just set it here over medium heat and let it roll. I really can't tell you how good this already smells. I could literally put out a California wildfire with the amount of saliva coming out of my mouth. So we just wanna maintain a really light simmer like you see there. I even turned the heat down a little bit to medium low. All right, this has been cooking for about 15 minutes by now. It's reduced by about 40%. We're gonna go ahead and pull out all these aromatics that have now done their job. Now here we have some cornstarch mixed with water. Simple as just mixing those two together. We're gonna to dump that in, turn up the heat a little, and we'll whisk that in. And when you're working with these cornstarch slurries, wait for this liquid to come back to a boil and then you'll see really how thick it got. And so when we're doing most Asian cooking, you'll see a lot of these cornstarch type slurries used to thicken sauces. And this will give you a nice shiny sauce as opposed to using a roux with French cooking, you'll get a more cloudy sauce. But I do like the flavor of a roux better, but obviously a roux is not gonna work good here. At this point, we're gonna add all our beautiful short rib back in. Oh ho ho! Let's mix that in. I'm starting to get really excited. It actually needs to be a little more thick, so I'm gonna add one more teaspoon of the cornstarch but that will all be in the description. How good does this look, my friends? How good? And that's why, as you'll recall earlier in the recipe, remember we didn't add too much salt at all to our beef. This is why, right? We gotta think about the final 
final product, not what we're doing in the moment. Eye on the prize. All right, there we go. We can shut that off now. And we're just gonna dump that out into a bowl to let it cool. I'll come over here and turn it periodically as you can see all that steam coming out. As it cools, it's really gonna thicken up a lot more, making it easy to work with when we put it in the bun. Okay, time to make one of my favorite things in the entire world, bao bun dough. I think I'm saying that right. The most fluffy, heavenly, delicious dough on the planet. Let's make it. Okay, we're gonna start by taking some whole milk and just a little bit of water. Now I'm just gonna warm this up in the microwave till it's about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take. Now we're gonna add our active dry yeast. The full recipe will always be in the description and I'll do it for Americans as well as the rest of the world. In it goes. We'll add our sugar at this point too and oil. Give that a little whisk and we're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes. Let that yeast activate, feeding on the sugar. Now some all-purpose flour here. We're gonna add our salt and the other half of our sugar. So half of the sugar went in with the yeast and the milk and the other half is going in here and just a touch of baking powder. If you have a stand mixer with the dough hook, that's gonna be the easiest thing to do, obviously. But I know not everybody has those, so I'm just gonna do it by hand. You can do it that way too. We'll just mix up all our dry ingredients first and then I'll mix sort of a little well in the center like this. After about 10 minutes, our yeast is activated. We go ahead and pour all that into that well and we'll just begin mixing this in, first in the bowl. And once it's roughly together like this, we can tip it out here, scrapey, scrapey. And we're gonna begin working it with our hands. And if it gets a little sticky here, just add a little flour to your work surface and keep working it. This dough should be sticky though, but not too sticky as to where you can't really work with it. So you'll feel that flour get worked in, it'll get sticky again. We'll just roll it in a little more flour and keep it going. All right, I've just been kneading this for about five minutes and it's sticky to the touch, but it doesn't stick to my finger. That's what you want. See how this sticks to your finger a little bit, but you can still pull away? That is what we want, beautiful dough. So now I'll create a little tension on this dough like so. Perfect little ball into the mixing bowl. Cover with a damp kitchen towel. I'll see you later. I'll see you later, baby. Now we're gonna let this triple in size, my friends. Depending on where you are and how hot it is in your environment, maybe you're in a freaking jungle right now. I don't know. Could take an hour and a half to triple in size for you. It could take two and a half hours. Could take two hours. But I'll let you know how long it takes for me here. If you wanna speed up the process too, you can put it like near the stove. If your oven is on, there'll be extra heat coming from that. But I'm gonna let it go slow. I'm not in a hurry today. Okay, voila, here's our dough. So light and fluffy, if you can see this. Incredible. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to punch all of this down now. Out. Goodbye dough. And then we're gonna flour our work surface here and get our dough out. Keep that flour off to the side and take it as you need it. And now what we're gonna do here is a bit of a lamination technique. Almost like what you would do when you're making croissants. I messed up my shape a little bit here, but that's okay. And so we're just gonna roll out a circle to start. My version of a circle, I should say. Pretty big. Now, when we have about this size, we're gonna fold it in half like so. Roll again. And we're creating little layers here, almost like a croissant. And it's gonna make this already fluffy dough even fluffier, which I have no problem with that. Now we do it this way. Bang. And continue rolling, just like so. I like to keep moving it so it doesn't stick, like flipping it over. And now when we've got it about this size, what we're gonna do is starting from this non-pointy side, roll it up like a little log. Keep it nice and tight, like so, and just bring it together here at the end. And now we just need to kind of roll it like this to work it all back together and just even it out so the middle's not super thick. So we're gonna focus on that spot. Almost like making gnocchi, if you ever done that. I used to have to make them all the time. And that's why I don't do it anymore. Now, you can make these bao buns as big or as small as you like. That's a pretty even looking log. Something just like that. Now I'm gonna take this little dough tool here and I'm just figuring out how many I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna do eight. You could do 10 here, make them a little smaller or 12 even smaller ones, but I wanna make these big. So I'm gonna cut it like a sushi roll, right? Also this end is a little thinner, so I wanna cut it really about here, about here. And then what we wanna do is just cut those right in half, just like so. Oop, that one's a little small, that's all right. And what we're left with here is this little dough. You can almost see the little spiral shape from the laminating process. Now the ones that you're not working with at the moment, you wanna set them over here and just cover them with a damp towel so they don't dry out. And we'll begin working with our dough. All right, let's roll out our little bun. So we'll just start by smashing this down a little bit. And then really what you wanna do here is push from the center out because we wanna leave the center a little bit thicker than the edges. That way when you wrap it all up, you should have an even layer of dough all around the filling. So I'm just pushing out and turning. I'm no master at this, my friends. This is actually difficult to do, but 
the end result is always worth it. And try not to use too much flour here if you don't need to because it will shrink up on you and you don't want that. Just keep working it until you see those edges are pretty thin. Something like this looks pretty good, could be a little more round, but that'll have to do. Now this is the really hard part. I don't even know if I can do it, I'm gonna try. My wife is so much better at this. We wanna take some of our beef filling right here in the middle. Don't be shy now. And now we're gonna try to make a little fold here like this, using our left index finger to push it in. Gosh, it's difficult. And then keep working our way around like this. Keep folding. Oh, I totally, I botched it. I botched it. Well, if that happens, you just pinch it closed like that. It's still gonna be absolutely fine. We see, you can see how we were getting those folds here, but I botched it in the end. I don't know if I can do it, guys. These kind of things are, are difficult for me, but you can always just pinch it closed like this. Just make sure it's closed nice and tight and then set it back under the towel to rest. Teacup with two ramekins inside. Let's see if we can't do it now. <laughs> oh, I got you. Filling in, okay. Here we go. Not bad, not bad. Pinch the top, make a little point. Look, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I'm not applying at any dim sum restaurants anytime soon. Now with our buns here, they need to rest for another half an hour to rise again before steaming under this little damp towel. Now for the steamer, you're gonna want some parchment paper on the bottom so it doesn't stick. And what I like to do here, we just fold a piece in half and then again into quarters like so. And then we fold it up like this, just like that. And you wanna measure from the center of the seamer to the outside and then make a cut roughly there. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then we just cut that little tip off. And now we unfold and we have this little thing, which you can just pop in here, just like that. And we can set our pork buns right on top of that. And that little hole is so the steam will come through. I cut mine a little too big. Actually, it's better if it's just sitting flat, but that'll be all right. And if you have one of those cool bamboo steamers, why are you rubbing it in my face? I don't have one. I don't have, where's my toy? Okay, now we can place our risen buns into the steamer and I'm only gonna be able to fit three at a time because these are gonna steam up huge. Hopefully that gives them enough space. Make sure they're spread out, should be okay. Okay, here we go, my friends, on the steamer. They should take about 12 minutes. Okay, 12 minutes has elapsed. Oh my gosh, that is a big boy. Looking at these things steamed, you could definitely get 10 to 12 out of this recipe, but if you want them huge, do them like this. I just cut one here. Woo, kind of ashamed to cut these, but hey, it all worked out in the end. Oh my gosh, the dough is so fluffy. I think we just needed a little bit more filling to dough ratio, but hey, I'm not complaining. All right, it's going down. God, that's good. Ah! Ah! Oh, oh God. Oh, I shouldn't have kicked it like that. Ooh, I gotta be careful. Mm. Ah! There's so much going on in the best way possible. This is legit. Dim sum meets barbecue. I think we're onto something here. And it's gone, no surprise there. Look, if you're still watching the video, that means you're a true friend. So please drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment if you so want, and turn on notifications if you're a psycho. And as always, my friends, until next time, you know I love you and I'm out.